All right, this is going to be a freaky short video because there's almost nothing you can do with exponentials that doesn't require the chain rule. You'll see these all the time in calculus throughout integrals. They're really useful in biology and, you know, chemistry, lots of great applications. So this is one of the most common types of integrals, and you'll see it in um, differential equations. But the problem is that its derivative is really boring, you know, just an x upstairs you'll hardly ever see. Now, is this the most boring integral formula you've ever seen or what? The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Super easy, right? And that's, if it was a chain rule, some more interesting things happen. It's a little bit harder, but when it's just x before you learn the chain rule, the only exponent they can give you is x, and therefore e to the x just is still e to the x when you take the derivative. So that's the natural log exponential, or the, when the base is e, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of, of c to the x, like 10 to the x, is not just, you know, prime, is not just 10 to the x. It's 10 to the x times the ln of 10. So that's, that's a little wrinkle that you'll see in the exponentials with something other than e. But the truth is you hardly ever come across this. It's almost always e to the x or e to the x squared or e to the x squared minus 2 or whatever. So this is just introducing the concept, but these will get a lot hairier and we'll have a lot more of them in the chain rule chapter when I go back through all these videos only using the chain rule. So if anything, just reiterate, if the exponent is anything besides x, 2x, 5x, x squared, x to the fifth, 1 over x squared, anything, you have to use the chain rule. All right, so let's just do a couple of quick examples. Derivative of 2 times e to the x is 2e to the x, because you just keep the 2. Derivative of 12, 12 times anything is just keep the 12, and then derivative of e to the x is e to the x. This one's a little bit uglier, but really this is just a 1 third times e to the x, because anything divided by 3, you're really just multiplying by 1 third. Now that you got it in this form, take its derivative, and you get 1 third e to the x. Pretty wacky, right? These really, nothing happens. It's really boring. All right, so then the basis besides e, slightly more difficult. You're going to do 5 to the x, just like you would for e, but then you're going to multiply times the ln of the base. So not too bad. If you're doing integrals, you'd end up dividing by the ln of the base. I know you haven't done integrals yet. Just if you happen to be stopping by this and your class is already in the second half of calculus, just an FYI. Uh, 2 times 3 to the x, well, we're just going to leave the 2. Then the derivative of 3 to the x is just 3 to the x, ln of 3. So we'll end up with 2 ln of 3 times 3 to the x. Now, the only mistake you can really make on these is if you, you see how I put this dot here? It's sort of like I didn't need to put a multiplication sign, but it can get a little confusing. Same thing here. If I have two, you know, if I just wrote my usual 2 times 3 to the x, is that 23 to the x? Or is that 2 times 3 to the x? What is the x the exponent of is the problem. So that's why sometimes it's really helpful to put a dot in there just to, to remind yourself and show your teacher and whoever else is looking at this exactly what's raised to the power of x and what is not. This last one, same trick we had before, dividing by 3 is really just 1 third times 3 to the x. And the reason I did that is so it looked less like a quotient rule problem. Once I got this, I just keep everything. So I keep the 1 third, then I multiply times 3 to the x, then I multiply by the ln of 3. There's another way to do this, which I'll show you in a second, which is, you know what we could have done is taken this and said to ourselves, huh, that's 3 to the x divided by 3 to the 1, so really that's similar basis I can subtract exponents. So you could rewrite this as 3 to the x minus 1, and then take the derivative of that instead of this. The problem is, now this is a chain rule problem, because our exponent isn't x anymore, it's x minus 1. So I'm just warming you up for some algebraic trickery. I just want to remind you of this. These problems right here, they don't look like you'd be able to do them without the chain rule. Because like I said, if the exponent is anything besides x, you can't take the derivative without the chain rule. But we can actually use some algebraic trickery to turn these into things that are not, to you know, kind of like reduce the exponent to x. So right here, I want you to remember that if you ever had x squared times x cubed, didn't that equal x to the fifth? We just added the exponents. Well, this one, it's like they've already added it, and you can just unadd it. You can do the opposite. You can pull it back apart. 
So you can say, you know what? E to the x plus 1, that would actually be e to the 1 times e to the x. Because if you multiply these two together, wouldn't you get x plus 1 as your exponent? And the reason this is nice is because e is just a number. The number e, this guy right here, that's just 2.7 something. It's kind of like pi. It's just a specific number. It's 2. Da, 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 2.7 something, never ending decimal, whatever. Point is, though, this is really just a number times e to the x. And what do you do when you have a coefficient out in front of something? You just leave it alone, right? So e. And then we'll take the derivative just to the part that has an x in it, which is e to the x. But of course, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So it turns out that the derivative of this and it, you know, went, is exactly what we started with, right? We went from this to this. We just, nothing happened. So same thing we always see. So it turns out, even if you had used the chain rule on this originally, what you would have gotten was just that the derivative of e to the x plus 1 is just e to the x plus 1. Because once I have this, I can just recombine it back to e to the x plus 1. Pretty silly, but as you can see, we sidestepped the uh, chain rule. Not that the chain rule is so brutal you want to avoid it that bad, but I just want to throw this in here because there are situations in calculus where the big trick of a problem will turn out to be taking something like this and splitting it up. So I just want to throw that out there. You can do the same thing on this one. Um, it won't be quite as straightforward, but 3 to the x plus 2 is really just 3 to the x times 3 squared, right? And of course, I'd probably want to re rewrite, since I, I like to have coefficients in front, so I'll rewrite this as 9 times, oops, not e, 3 to the x. So when I take the derivative, I just leave the 9 alone. Then the derivative of 3 to the x is 3 to the x times ln of 3. So pretty cool. And at that point, we're done. Or if you really wanted to, you could rewrite it as 9 ln of 3. Just put it in order so that the sort of exponential goes last. Now, it's how I personally like it, but I don't think your teacher will probably care. All right, last one. This one's a little bit different just because it's x minus 2 instead of x plus 2. But that doesn't mean the same trick can't apply. So what we'll do is we'll figure, you know what? That's the same thing as 5 to the negative 2 times 5 to the x. Um, which is just 1 25th times 5 to the x. And now we take the derivative. So we leave the 1 25th alone. Then we leave the 5 to the x alone. But we have to multiply by ln of 5 since our base thing was not e. It was 5. Oops. Circle the whole answer, not just part of it. All right. So that's exponentials without the chain rule. And some algebraic trickery, you probably, you know, pretty obscure stuff. But uh, hey, fun with exponents, right? Stuff like this is what calculus is full of. So when in doubt, I'm trying to drill you guys with algebra right now so that when it comes up later, you won't feel totally hosed.